Hello and welcome to RIT Sports Zone. I'm John Dettulio. Last November, alumnus Steve Schultz donated $1 million to RIT, officially kicking off the school's power play campaign to help fund the construction of a new arena here on campus for hockey. Now, one year later, RIT's power play has scored its most significant donation yet. Shelby Hill has the latest. Construction on the future home of RIT Hockey hasn't even begun, but the new facility already has a name. Thanks to a $4.5 million partnership with the Policini Foundation and Tom Galasano, the hockey program will soon call the Gene Policini Center their new home. This is an amazing story, and we just couldn't have a better name for this arena. You know, uh, Gene Policini and Tom Galasano were childhood friends. When uh, Tom Galasano decided that he was going to try to start a company, which eventually became Paychex, Together they built the company into what it is today. It's a tremendous story of personal friendship, hard work, perseverance, and I think RIT, of course, is the beneficiary of that extraordinary relationship. And what a better way to honor Gene Policini's memory than to have his name on this magnificent new facility. Now, what does this donation say to the Policini's and Tom Galsano's commitment to the community? Well, I think, um, and maybe not as publicized all the time, the, the money that uh, they certainly uh, uh, help out many, many causes uh, throughout our community. Uh, community. Uh, the community is very important to them. These are people that, uh, uh, you know, Rochester is very special to them and, and really help uh, Rochester thrive. Uh, we, we really, really appreciate uh, everything that they've done. How gratifying is it to you in that campaign? You know, it couldn't be better. Uh, it's a, the, exactly the big gift we needed to get this campaign going. We're, I think, over halfway there now. I think that this will build excitement towards the campaign, and hopefully if we raise a couple million dollars more this spring, we'll get an architect, and maybe if we get a couple million after that, we'll start construction in the fall. So how much have you raised so far? About a little over $8 million, and uh, we're very encouraged by what we hear from the community. We have some other large asks out. No question, we're going to build this thing. The only real question is when. Now, do you think you're going to start building, you know, before you get the 15 million, or wait until then? Well, now that we have a name for the center, it makes it, it makes it easier for us to start looking forward to getting an architect and thinking about the placement and making some more firm, firm plans to make this happen. And so it's exciting. What does this do to the momentum of the campaign? Oh, it, it uh, it's a big surge. Let's put it that way. You know, you, when you get a 4.5 million dollar gift it sends a message out to folks that uh, we're serious we got some people behind us who are serious about it and uh, and, I, and I think it's going to develop kind of a snowball a little domino effect we'll get more gifts bigger gifts hopefully and we'll get to that uh, 15 million million dollar point sooner than we think have you are you talking to some other major companies and is there you know a major donation in the works or? we have several things in the works they're not nearly as big as this but we have quite a few things in the works and you know they all add up and uh, you know, we're gonna get there and, and I'm, I couldn't be more thrilled not only with this wonderful day and this wonderful announcement but the team's playing well tonight so what's not to like? Is it kind of hitting you that a new rink is really gonna come to campus? Yeah it is I mean we've been talking about it for a while and uh, very hopeful and we've had some very generous gifts already and uh, the thing that uh, I guess I appreciate more than anything else or I think is special about this it's coming from people with sincere interest in hockey and I think it makes it that much more meaningful the, the name Gene Palacini will live on for a long long time and will be a very special building in our community. When you see the president standing out there saying that this thing is going to become a reality and I, I, I kind of watched, I looked up in the stands and I, you know, I just saw the excitement in their eyes and their, and their voices. You know, it's, uh, what we have here is a pretty darn special thing. Now we have the Gene Palacini Center. We'll have people who knew about Gene, his work, his contributions to the community. Uh, I, I, I don't know how this can't succeed now. To date, RIT has raised over half of the campaign's $15 million goal. Now, for more information on how you can join the effort to help build the Gene Policini Center, visit rit.edu slash powerplay. Well, still to come on SportsZone, a familiar face returns to the ice after a five-game suspension. The men's soccer plays for its first Liberty League title. Highlights are on the way. You're watching RIT SportsZone in high definition.
Welcome back to Sports Zone. Since 2007, RIT and Air Force have been the teams to beat in Atlanta hockey, with the Falcons claiming four AHA crowns and the Tigers earning one. RIT welcomed their rivals to Rochester for the first time this season, looking to halt the Falcons' seven-game unbeaten streak. As there you take a look at Shane Matalora. How about the applause, Johnny, for Shane Matalora tonight? Shane Matalora back in net after sitting out five games. More on him in a moment. Late first period, Adam Mitchell's shot is stopped, but Brian Potts is there to put home the rebound. 1-0 RIT after one. Second period. Mitchell forces a turnover. Mike Kolovecki finds Potts. Cross ice for a second of the night. RIT led two zip. And Shane Matalora stopped 25 of 26 shots he faced as RIT held on to beat Air Force 3-1 as their number one goalie made a successful return to the lineup. Shane Matalora returned to the lineup tonight after serving a five-game suspension for violating an NCAA rule. The infraction occurred in 2009 when Matalora forgot to officially ask the NCAA to certify him for coming to RIT. But now with that behind him, Matalora and the Tigers are ready to move forward. You got back in the net tonight. What were you thinking? Uh, Sorry, I got really excited when I came out just because, uh, like we said, the, the fans were chanting my name and all, and all that. Um, but I had to calm myself down and, and just remember that it's another hockey game. I've been playing hockey my whole life, so uh, I had to settle back down and get back into the groove of things and focus on the first shot of the game. You didn't play for five games. Can you tell me the reasoning behind that? Uh, I guess it was something to do with the clearinghouse and the NCAA, and they said that when I was going through the whole process of the clearinghouse uh, that I didn't sign a waiver or check a box or something. So um, I guess they deemed that to five game suspension. Really, uh, he took a, a, a wrong science course. He took like an agricultural science. His dad's a, a farmer out in uh, California and it did not count uh, towards the required three sciences that he needed to take. He sat out the year and then when he came in, he did all his paperwork. He was cleared and eligible but what he forgot to do was check a box basically that says uh, uh, requesting to be reinstated. That's about the best I can explain it. For him, I guess the punishment was five games because he played five games. Thank God he didn't play 30 games. When you heard the news that Shane wasn't going to be playing for a few games, how did you and the team react? Uh, I think it kind of just blindsided us. We really had no idea. And I mean, we, we fought through it well. It was obviously Shane's our, our go-to goalie right now, and he's proven well, and it's nice to have him back in the lineup. But uh, just for a little time there, it was, it was a little weird. No one really knew what was going on, and then it was just rumors here and there, and kind of figured it out, and that's that. We try to stay positive about the whole situation. I don't know all the details, but, uh, you know, Shane's a great goalie. He's the best in the league, and he showed it again tonight. Was it hard to watch your team and – you couldn't do anything about it? Yeah, it's definitely frustrating um, to come to the game and have to sit in the stands and then have people come and ask you, why, why aren't you playing? What's going on every single game for, well, it seems like a half hour straight almost. But um, it was definitely frustrating to have to sit there and watch, especially when we were struggling a little bit for a few games. It was hard, it was difficult. How good does it feel to have Shane back? I just, uh, good, comforting uh, that you've got your number one goalie back, someone that you can rely on, someone that's been tested, someone that uh, has proven himself uh, certainly last year and even some games the, the year before. Shane, over the last year and a year and a half or year and a bit, whatever, is he's played real well for us. And I mean, he's a gamer and, and having him back there in the net tonight, he showed why he's our number one guy and um, played real well. Now, with Shane gone for almost a month, were you worried he might be a little rusty coming back in? I thought maybe he would be a little bit rusty, um, you know, and then maybe just pressing a little bit. You know, he was his old self. I mean, he just kind of plays very strong, and he does a great job. He does give us confidence, and uh, I think we were able to build off of that, and a couple of saves early in the game, I think, uh, solidifies that for us, and it was good to have. What does it do for the team's confidence not only have you back, but, you know, beat Air Force a big rival? Uh, it was a huge confidence boost just because uh, Air Force beat us last year in the playoffs and then uh, they went on to the regionals. So um, they're always a team that w that's going to be at the top of the league and to get to the regionals, that's the team that we have to go through. It's a big win for us. Um, we were in a little bit of a rut there and um, two, uh, two big wins. We've had two good weekends in a row and uh, hopefully we can move on from there. How much of a weight is off your shoulders now that you're back on the ice? A uh, huge weight because I was really, to start off, it was down. I was really down on myself just because... Uh, 
I was suspended, didn't know why, didn't know how long, and just all the unknowns is, is really difficult and frustrating. And um, now that I'm back, it's, it feels like a weight's lifted off my shoulders, and, and I can just focus on playing in the rest of the year and uh, the rest of the school year, too. Ahead on Sports Zone from RIT to the silver screen, we're going to show you how this former NTID student's life story is inspiring countless individuals. Matt Hamill was the first deaf wrestler to win a national collegiate championship, and the former RIT student was also the first deaf person to participate in mixed martial arts. Through the years, Hamill's been an inspiration to many by overcoming adversity to make his dreams come true. Now, after years of production, his life story, filled with many ups and downs, has finally hit the big screen. Okay, we're rolling, and action. It's been over two years since the bright lights of Hollywood came to RIT to feature one of our own. He was always the center of attention, and wherever we went, wherever we traveled, you know, people, you could always hear him whisper under their breath, you know, oh, that's Matt Hamill, you know, I've got to watch him wrestle. Matt Hamill, a former RIT NTID student and three-time Division III wrestling champion, first caught Hollywood producers' attention when he became a contestant on the Ultimate Fighter reality show. My riding partner, Eben Kaspar, uh, saw it on the UFC reality show a few years back. Thought it'd be, he thought Matt was an inspiring uh, guy himself, and uh, we looked into it. We tracked him down, met him, interviewed him. Um, thought it would be a good idea for a script and wrote the script. I think the, the writing process was difficult to, in the beginning because to try and have uh, explain to someone that we're going to write your life story but we're going to just fit it in a three act structure and an hour and a half film. Your dad and your yeah. grandfather into one character. Not only is his story unique, but the final result is the first of its kind. And. One of the really cool things I think that we've been thinking about this project from the beginning is it's going to be totally subtitled. So the hearing people will be able to hear the English, but they'll have to read the subtitles for the ASL and vice versa for the deaf people. I told you your whole life you don't need to be treated different. But I am different. There aren't a lot of movies that you can go to the theater and watch hearing and deaf together unless they're foreign films because the deaf people need the subtitles. So it's kind of this one-of-a-kind movie where, where deaf people and hearing people can watch it together in the theater. After years of production, the movie titled The Hammer, after Hamill himself, has already won eight film festival awards and has finally hit the big screen in over a hundred theaters nationwide. I'm going to tell you you have a highly intelligent grandson who's profoundly deaf. <laughs> well, already we've, uh, we've went eight for eight in film festivals, which is awesome. I think it was uh, AFI in California, Maui, uh, Cleveland. We just wanted to, to hit the right audiences and kind of bridge the gap and, and have it be a um, blind side meets Rocky meets Rudy type of film. We knew the film was special from the beginning and everybody's been involved with it, you know, especially uh, I myself was very late in the process, but it's been phenomenal to see that everybody else is coming out and supporting it. And the vast majority of those awards came not from critics, but they came from the audience members themselves who love the film and just want to see it succeed. What's it like for you, just this feeling that you have now that your life is made into a movie? Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's something that, um, it's so weird. It's really weird because, I mean, it was a strange thing to me, you know, and I didn't expect to go this far. I, I mean, let's go back a little bit. This movie, uh, The Hammer, it took us six years for the prize yet. I thought, you know, it won't be really special or that. I thought it might be real short, the one there, but I realized the movie producers did not give up. But overall, you know, what I feel like is, wow, it's very special, you know. It's a special moment, you know, to have someone, you know, about my life showing them around the world, and it's, just, it's really amazing. Hamill's story will certainly serve as an inspiration to both the deaf and hearing community. You know, I hope that they just enjoy the film and feel good about it. You know, obviously the message is overcoming struggles at any point in your life. 
Um, I haven't seen the film until tonight, but the parts I've seen are really uplifting, and um, you know, it's a great message, and I think it comes at a, a pretty cool time. Although Matt Hamill has achieved so much in his life, at the young age of 35, he says there is still more to come. I'm still retiring from your thing, you know, but I'm going to see what happens after Christmas. I told him I wore Taylor Cup, you know, so I'm just let, you know, you know let it flow, see how it goes from there. I'm 35, you know, so yeah. I don't want to be clear when I get older, you know, so I'm just hoping there might be a little bit of spark, you know, open door I can get in, so. but right now I'm just having to take care of my body. You're a motivational speaker, you're a UFC fighter, you can speak six languages. Like, for you, what is your biggest accomplishment? Well, I'm still not that fine. I'm still not that fine, you know. Other people can see my eyes, you know. I'm just not really happy, but I still have more to prove from around the world, you know. I still have something to prove, you know. But let's just, let's just put this way, something bigger than the worst ever could me. In just their first season in the Liberty League, the RIT men's soccer team proved they belong. The Tigers shut out ninth ranked Hobart in the league semifinals, earning the right to host the conference title game. Tigers hosting Vassar, a team they beat 2-0 earlier this year, but Vassar controlled things early. Fifth minute off the corner kick, Giuliano Pereira finds the top right corner to give the Brewers an early 1-0 lead. RIT would answer, 28th minute off the throw in Matt Brodel with the chance and he puts it in to not the game at one. Second half tied at two, 85th minute off the free kick. Xander Mirlik elevates and heads in the eventual game winner as Vassar ends RIT season with a 3-2 victory. The RIT men's soccer team's successful run in a new league ended in disappointment. The RIT Tigers were defeated 3-2 against Vassar to lose the Liberty League championships and a bid to the NCAA tournament. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it wasn't the ideal outcome, but what does it mean to you to have such a great season and come to the championship your first time in the Liberty League? Yeah, I mean, it was great for the team. Um, you know, as a senior, we wanted to go out strong, and, um, you know, most of the teams in the Liberty League didn't expect us to do what we did, and um, I'm proud of our boys, um, coaching staff, everybody. We gave it our all. And, it's tragic the way it ended, but uh, it, was, it was still a great run and look forward to seeing them here next year again. We want to win championships. Today we uh, had a shot, um, didn't didn't play our best game and, and got ran into a team that's been uh, flying lately and hats off to them. They, they uh, I think, uh, unfortunate for us today. Feeding Vassar 2-0 earlier in the season, do you think it made you guys a little too overconfident coming into today's game? No, it didn't. We knew, we knew what we had to do. Um, we only executed for part of the game. You know, they're a great team. Um, you know, all, all the teams in the Liberty League are so competitive that one day, um, you know, you can be team 5 nothing. next day you can, you know, lose. So it's, it's a tough, tough conference, one of the toughest in the nation. And um, for us to be in is, is, uh, is a real, real privilege. How did not having your starting goaltender not affect the team chemistry? Uh, well, we didn't have him Tuesday either. There's, there's some effect, sure. You know, he's been, Sean was arguably one of the best goalies in the region all year. A uh, strong part of our success, um, but this is a team. We, we have other players to step in. Ben stepped in and got a shutout Tuesday against the eighth-ranked team in the country. Um, I thought he did, uh, you know, he didn't hurt us today. But sure, we miss, you miss a player of Conway's caliber, no, no question about it. Why do you think you guys matched up so well to the teams in the Liberty League and did so well? Uh, we're... We're a simple team. We like to play soccer. Um, you know, but a lot of other teams, um, you know, play more direct, play physical. Uh, that, that's the American way. But we, we like to play soccer, and we we beat teams by wearing them out with our fitness. And then in the end, um, you know, we beat them with our play and, and get get a few goals. I think we did well against. Didn't matter who it was because we had a, um, some relatively tough players mentally who fought. And we played a simple game. We didn't. Uh, we had a lot of close games, but we got a lot of positive results in close games. So that tells you about uh, a little bit of the mental makeup of some of the guys. Um, they believed. We worked hard. And uh, if 
you do those things, some good things can happen. We, we got a ways to go, but I think we got a taste this year, especially for some of the younger guys. You know, we're starting two or three freshmen most games. Um, today was about today and about this year, but we got to take a little bit of look and say, you know, what does this present for us for next for the for the future. What will you take away from this season and your time here playing with the Tigers? Just the great memories, you know, on and off the field, uh, in the locker room. Um, you know, I met some of my best friends that I'll keep for the rest of my life. And, um, you know, the memories when I talk to my grandkids about me playing college soccer, this, this is what I'm going to keep. Well, that does it for this edition of RIT Sports Zone. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with Sports Zone by following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook. So, until next time, thanks for joining us here in the zone. <laughs>